This is the very devil for teachers. Because you see, all our universities and schools are trying to teach creativity. That's the great thing these days, you know. And you here at the Esalen, uh, all sorts of people are giving courses and workshops in creativity. Now, the trouble is this. If we found out a method whereby we could teach creativity, and everybody could just explain how it was done, it would no longer be of interest, <laughs> interest, interest. Again, Tiana here from Rainy Rarotonga bringing you and yet another episode of The Creative Coconuts. Tonight we're going to take a seat with Morgan George. She's a young contemporary artist who works with a multitude of mediums and tools to create her art. In this fun talk she'll speak about the struggles and what it's like to be a young creative in the islands and her current work on an online comic as well as other digital projects. Anyways, I won't keep you waiting, so here it is. My name is Morgan George and I'm kind of an artist and I do arty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that well known in the creative world though because I guess, actually I don't know because I don't pay attention to stuff going on outside my bubble. <laughs> bunch of different ways to describe it um, just because art isn't just one thing for me it's its kind of own thing and I like people can interpret it how they want yeah I don't really know it's just kind of always been there so and it's always been the thing I've wanted to do like there's been other stuff like when I was little I was gonna grow up and be a lion <laughs> but <laughs> um, you know art's always been kind of the main focus of my life yeah, for me, art is kind of like, it's just second nature. It's breathing. It's just there. And it's beautiful. From a technical standpoint, I'm very kind of manga artist, comic artist type thing. And I like drawing, you know, I like drawing cartoonish people and stuff like that. But, uh... That's kind of more just from a technical standpoint and what you see when you look at it. For me though, it's like, I do like looking at varieties of art. Like I like abstracts, I like carvings, I like a lot of things because it's just really cool seeing different stuff. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's not really, it's, it's a little complicated to answer that one in some ways just because it's not just, just because I have a certain style doesn't mean I don't like other things. <laughs> to be like I haven't actually had as much of a creative drive recently like in the past two years or so which has been quite sad as an artist but um the exhibit was a good way to kind of rekindle the fire so I don't remember the exact process that um I remember I did have this character though and the general idea I wanted to do was I would start kind of super tradi traditional, like with, you know, drawings, pencil sketches, and then the paintings would kind of progress into like a more digital era and become, you know, a lot more finesse and crisp. But I did have to keep in mind that my theme was red, so, and the main, the key figure of it was this red-headed girl, so I had to make sure I kept her in all the pieces somehow. And that 
there was still a flow, so I had one piece that I didn't show. And it was like this red-headed figure with some other guy, and they were on a battlefield. And the piece was supposed to be called Glory and Gore. But because, and I was gonna add it in, but because there wasn't a guy in any of the other pieces, it looked kind of odd. So I knew it was like, all right, I shouldn't, I shouldn't add that. Um, but yeah, it's like, I would like to, I wouldn't mind doing more exhibits with just multiple artists so then people can see not just one person, but like, you know, get a variety and go like, oh, I like this person's style. I want to see more of this work. I had a tendency to just kind of draw stuff and be, yes, this is my magnum opus. But um, art kind of helped me, like art class, it helped me realize that you do need to plan stuff, especially if you're doing like a larger series or something. You can't just do a whole bunch of different stuff and say, ah, yeah, this will work. Because <laughs> you need to be really, really good at like making up some bullshit meaning <laughs> between the pieces. But like, yeah, so it helped me realize that you do need to you still need to plan it out what you're doing and you can't just always just do whatever and I have an unfortunate tendency where even though I'll plan stuff out really well I'll forget my plan so then I'll just kind of go in a different direction and usually it works but I'm not saying don't do that <laughs> <laughs> So it's one, it's you, pay, you can build some sort of kind of portfolio, either online or, you know, physical copy. Uh, the way I've done it was, I was really fortunate. There's a gallery here, the Red Gallery, and basically I was able to go up to them and they said, hey, if you have some stuff that you wanna, that you wanna sell, you can sell it here. So that gave me an opportunity just to sell my own works. As you know, it, it's a, like, I will say this though, that it is an island themed gallery because it does kind of appeal, it's for tourists, that's the main target audience. But so I was, I was able to sell my own work, so as long as it fit that kind of criteria. And then from there, if um, they had people come into them for, like, for commissions, but they were too busy, they would just pass it off to me. So that is how I would get my commissions. Um, some other ones I've gotten was just people who knew me personally, kind of. Like I've had some teachers or friends or like my mom's coworkers. They would just come up and go like, Morgan, would it be right if you could do this for us? It honestly depends on who the piece is for, first and foremost. So if it's just a personal piece of mine, then what I do is I pretty much just draw whatever's in my head. And I, if I don't finish it, if I finish it, it's all good either way. Um, if it's for somebody else though, then I make sure what I try to, if it's like a commission basically, I try to figure out what it is exactly the person wants as much as I can. And then from there, I'll draw up a quick draft just to like to get the general layout and then maybe write a little color schemes. So like if for example, um, say a person wants a beach scene, it's like, would you like a sunset, regular day? Would you like something in the beach scene or, and if like, possible would you like specific colors I try to get that all sussed out at the beginning just so then I know for a fact that this is what they want and then from there I try to just work around that and then basically after the drawing stage I just pretty much sketch it onto a canvas and start painting and the big thing is while most people would normally say oh, just contact me online <laughs> it's uh, like through Facebook or something and I don't like social media really which I have nothing against people who use it. Me personally, I just don't like it. And in all honesty, I just can't be stuffed going on there all the time <laughs> to look through it. And, um, but because I'm not a huge fan of social media, I use a fake name. And because it's a fake name, no one knows who I am. <laughs> they don't know where to find me. So really a lot of it is if people want a commission, they even have to ask me personally or they have to just know me beforehand so then they can find me on Facebook <laughs> or social media. Yeah, we've actually got two things going on now. So we have two different stories and they're both supposed to have different kind of functions, purposes, whatever you want to call it. So the first one we started off was a comic called Bake and the idea is kind of 
I want to say like noir kind of supernatural type deal and it's the main character is this guy named Jack and he basically runs into this other character named Aaron and Aaron's a writer that's a struggling writer and they like you know they need a story and from Jack they get this really crazy story that they never would have expected so that's what I'll say on that one and our goal for that is to we want it to be we'd really like it to be like a fully published like hard copy of the book but then on the other hand we've got another story coming out called Infinity and it's um it's more it's supposed to be more like online friendly so you can and a bit shorter and not as I guess you could say hefty read so it's the series overall, I guess, would be kind of longer in comparison to Vague, but it would be more like short stories. And the idea would be it's like we would post that regularly online just so people are going like, oh, yeah, these people are still doing stuff and they haven't gone off and done something else while we can spend our spare time working on Vague and then try and get that all sorted out. Like the thing is, it's the art community here is quite big. It's just, I do think in some ways it can be quite limiting. It's like, you know, like for example, it's like a student just leaves school and they need a job, but jobs don't take you unless you have job experience. So you can't get the job no matter what you do. It's kind of like that. So even though there is a very large and established art community here, if you're young and new, it's going to be hard for you to kind of find, like, be able to get into that art community. And it's because, you know, there's like, you're not experienced yet. And I mean, I have noticed here there is a tendency like that on this island. It is, there is a lot of kind of Cook Island themed things, which makes sense because this is the Cook Islands. It's just if you wanted to do, branch off and do something else entirely, it would be a lot more difficult for you here than say somewhere like in New Zealand where there is more variety in the art range so yeah in that sense it's kind of like it, and I do think there is support it's just kind of if you're a new young artist it's going to be more difficult for you to get that support and unless you kind of follow certain criteria, I think that are on this island then it's going to be even more difficult because it's like if you're an established artist or like if you want to become an established artist you kind of have to follow the rules of like you know Cook Island themed art and again that's not bad it's just not everyone wants to do just that they want to do their own thing Hmm. The best way I could say it was just give them a chance, I'd say. Just let them try and grow in their own niche and don't try to constrain them into something that you think is best. Because it's like art, it's not just one thing. In my opinion, it's not just one thing. Like, for everyone, for each individual person, it's something different. And you should just let them, you know, grow and explore that individuality. Because I think that'd be, and I think... And all, honestly, that's something I would like to see. Just more variety and more of that individualism come out through people's paintings. And I don't just mean like how they make the painting. I also mean like what they're painting as well. One thing I would like is just being able to hopefully someday make more opportunities for people like in our age range or just like coming out of school and all that. Like if you want to start, um, pursue art, you want, I, want, I would like to make that more available for them here because it's not always easy. <laughs>
and that's that. Thank you Morgie for your time and for those of you who don't know, Morgie and I actually went to college together and wow, well, she actually is really good at what she does. She was the top art student in our year level and everything. So good on you Morgie Georgie. <laughs> Anyways, a little bit about our next episode. We feature Vol Williams, who is a culinary chef who is part-time owner of Bite Time Cafe in Zarotonga. So until we release that episode, why don't you head on down to Bite Time with Gunraro and get a sneak peek or a sneak taste, should I say. Try the pancakes with bacon if you do go like, mm, love me some good pancakes. Anyways, the thought of that has me hungry now. My mum's texted that dinner's ready, so I'll head off. So thank you again to everyone watching and we'll see you next time. En hora.